Welcome to the Crush It in Sales podcast. I'm your host, Melinda Van Fleet. This podcast focuses on the intersection of sales, leadership, and personal development. Now let's get ready to dig in and crush it. Welcome everyone. This is part two of managing and growing your sales pipeline so you don't get any surprises someday. If you haven't listened to part one, that was episode number 11. And I talked about gathering and squirreling. And I also talked about studying the current state of your account list. This episode, we will talk about number three and four. So number three, networking and connecting. I have to say, I had to take a pause there because this one has been a very interesting journey over the years. And I feel that it's either gone in a positive direction or in a crickets direction. And a positive direction is different reps that I have networked and connected with over the years that have become friends or just generally very nice. And we all help each other and we share connections and leads and You know, sometimes too, when you're a sales rep, you might feel like you're all alone out there, especially if you work on a more independent basis versus working in an office or have an office environment that you have to go to. So for me, it's very independent. So I definitely have made a lot of good friends on the road and some I talk to regularly or meet up with regularly and some I'm just been friendly with when I see them, I might see them out and about. Or I know that if I had a question or a problem, I could call them. What really has been truly beneficial over the years is being able to compare notes. And I like to call it the check to see if I'm crazy. And I had this when I was a buyer. I would sometimes touch base with a coworker and share a story just to see like, is it me or is it the story? Is it the person? Is it the scenario? you know, whatever. But sometimes it's nice to just have someone to bounce something off of to check your own mindset and your own mental state and and, uh, just kind of see if it, the problem is you or something you could have done better, or if the problem is something that's out of your control. And I'm sure we have all had lots of situations like that. So number one, networking and connecting on the road is great for that type of check. And then also, obviously, like I mentioned, to share leads, connections, you know, did someone go out of business? Is there a new owner? Is there a new buyer? Are they looking for something? You know, they might have ideas for you that you haven't thought of yet. And that is just fantastic. On the flip side, what's been interesting, and again, why I had to take a pause, is sometimes I reached out to people, especially when I was starting. Now it's it's been a little more quiet, but when I was starting as a sales rep 10 years ago, and I would reach out to people, I couldn't believe the amount of reps that were quote unquote, too busy to talk to me. And they might even been people that lived by me, which is really weird. But I feel that, you know, in this world, and unfortunately, this world is getting more and more competitive, more and more comparison, more and more judgment, you know, that type of mindset, behavior. It's just not how I rolled. So I noticed it. And if someone doesn't think that you don't notice that, if someone thinks, oh, that I really believe that they were too busy. No, we all notice those things. And it doesn't hurt to create a nice relationship with someone. That doesn't mean that you have to call them 24 or seven. It's just nice to have like a relationship Or at least say you know them when you're out and about because you just never know what is going to transpire in the future. You have no idea what the future holds for you, what type of connections could happen, who knows who. And you know what? I just learned a long time ago just to be nice to everyone and pay it forward with information because that also helps a lot too in the long run. So... Number three is networking and connecting. Number four, I learned a long time ago to ask customers if they have any other ideas for me. 
because sometimes those customers truly know of other stores or businesses or reps that you would really benefit from in terms of connecting. And a lot of people have a great mindset, just like I mentioned in this previous step, step number three about sales reps. Well, a lot of stores have great mindsets about that as well. And they want to help someone else. They want to pay it forward. They want to share their learnings and their knowledge. And they just really believe that connecting other people is just a really good way to be and a really great tool. So don't be shy in regards to asking your client, your customer, your store, whoever it is that you work with. And I hope people realize that I might be giving examples for stores, but this is really general and you can relate it to any type of business. But ask other people for their ideas and see if they have any um, any suggestions for you, anything you haven't thought of. And that will really help too. One thing is funny is... It seems to be the um, don't do it buzzword lately, and I've heard it before, but now I feel like every podcast keeps saying this, and I was talking to someone else about it the other day, but what you don't want to say, because this is definitely something that is getting under everyone's skin, is, can I pick your brain? So don't say that. Maybe have some pointed questions, you know, do you know anyone else in the area? Do you know anyone in this area? Do you have any other suggestions? Even something more specific than I'm thinking of off the top of my head, because obviously you know your business and you know what type of questions to ask. So I'm just keeping my questions pretty general, but you obviously would know something more specific. So just keep that in mind. So before you hang up the phone, before you go running out the door, even if you're communicating via email you know, maybe there's some ways where you can ask them for some great suggestions that would help you build your business. And in regards to three and four, a nice thing to do, and I'm sure you've heard it before, but you wouldn't believe how many people don't do this, say thank you. Write a thank you note, have some nice stationery, If it warrants it, send a gift card or a nice personal gift, something you might think they might like. But, you know, a $25 Starbucks, Panera, Jimmy John's, you know, if you can find out what their favorite lunch spot is, that's even better. Um, Amazon, so many people just love to get an Amazon card, especially if they're a big reader. You know, just a nice note to say thank you for their help and if like, again, if it warrants it, send a nice gift card or a little gift goes a long way. So this episode is a little more short and sweet. Again, to recap, number one is gather and squirrel. Number two, studying your account list. Number three, networking and connecting with other sales reps. And number four, asking your customer base, your client base, if they have any other ideas for you. So I hope you got some value from this podcast. I would love to hear from you. Also, please share with a friend. My email is melinda at melindavanfleet.com. My website also is melindavanfleet.com. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram. Those are the two platforms I hang out on. And until next time, I hope you crush it in sales. Thank you so much for listening.